So th the chancellor has asked for us to have a discussion of a dimension of drug addiction and drug trafficking that uh, is very consequential to what is happening in the United States. And that is there's an impact of the narcotic abuse epidemic on organ donation. And it's a grim irony. What I'm summarizing to say to you is that there are more organ donors because there have been more drug abuse deaths that have resulted in individuals becoming organ donors. The prevalence of this is widespread across the country so you can just see a heat map of where the locations of concern but then in the figure in the left lower of this slide about 125 Americans are dying each day from drug overdose and it rivals the rate of death that was seen in the HIV epidemic. Bertha, this one, it might be interesting. Who is, who, what's the profile of this individual? Because you were asking Angela early about unemployed. Well, they are employed. They're 18 to 25, large metropolitan area. And I'll go through the other aspects of this, but they're unemployed. I mean, they're employed. They are a mechanic, nurse's aide, working at Walmart. They're employed. And they shoot up, IV drug abuse, they shoot up during the day or at the time when they'll take a break from work. And they're found in the bathroom of work where they've overdosed and now they've arrested and found down, as it were, without circulation because of the overdose of the drug, which isn't just the opioids, um, there are synthetic drugs that are being used as well. And fentanyl is one of the drugs that is being imported into the country, of course illegally, uh, from Asia specifically, that is impacting this as well. The profile is an individual that has been addicted to prescription drugs. So the introduction to such drugs comes from a prescription that was given to relieve pain from some procedure or some from uh, a chronic condition. Um, and they're not just minority individuals and they're also males and have had as well addiction to marijuana or to alcohol. The rate of this for us is staggering. It's now for my New England Organ Bank, which is what the NEOB is, it's 27% of my organ donors are from drug abuse deaths. For the entire country, it's 12%. But if you take a look then at national statistics of the number of deceased organ donors, in 2015, the US reached more than 9,000 donors. And that slide is broken down into, bear with me, donors that are brain dead, the blue, blue column, and donors that are dying circulatory death, that is they have an absence of circulation and breathing. But we find quite a prevalence of our drug abuse deaths are in that red bar, the 1400 there. They have an anoxic death. The drug intravenous injection or inhalation results in an arrest of the heart. And so they die an anoxic death, brain death, but they, they don't have all of the criteria to fulfill brain death diagnosis because many times they're still having a breath. They take a breath, spontaneous breath. And for one to be brain dead, you not only have an absence of your cerebral 
consciousness, loss of your consciousness, but to be brain dead, you also must be with an absence of breathing spontaneously. Bear with me there, get my slide set back up here. More than now 30,000 transplants in the United States as a result of this increase. For us in the New England Organ Bank, it's led since 2012, where we had 217 donors. In 2016, we're projected to have more than 300 donors, a 56% increase, and mo most of that is coming now from the substance abuse deaths. And the transplant activity for our region, we will now have more than 1,000 transplants as a result of this. So it's a huge increase that we're seeing. Once again, this is not an individual that is unemployed, homeless, found on the streets, not at all. This is from a well-to-do family. This, the story of this person in Cape Cod, United, in the U.S., that's a, a, a part of Massachusetts, which is a very lovely um, rural area to live. And her story is very typical of the individual that's dying from, from the substance abuse. The point of this, for me to show you this, is that this individual didn't anticipate her death as a result of the substance abuse. So the combination of whatever they're taking from the fentanyl or from whatever they're injecting or inhaling, they thought they would get the high, but they, didn't, they did not think, she didn't think she was gonna die as a result of her of her injection. And so these data, just bear with me, it's sort of a busy slide. It talks about estimated and uh, confirmed, but the, the point is that, that these individuals of intentionally uh, resulting in their death is on the contrary, not the case at all. They, they, the family is surprised at their death. It's not a suicide. It's not intended to hurt themselves, and yet they're dying. Ah, yikes. So the portrait we've talked about, but I want to underscore, there's a high rate of donor designation. Again, affirming my point that these individuals didn't intend to die. They're registered to be organ donors. And we see now the number of registered in New England, for example, is over six million. And that corresponds to 132 million people that are registered to be donors in the United States. Well, the people that are dying of the substance abuse, they've all registered them themselves to be organ donors. They didn't have an immediate sense that they would be dying, yet they registered themselves to be organ donors, thinking that someday they would wish to be an organ donor but not at 23, not at 25, not at 30 years of age. It's quite a difference. And our authorization rates in these recent years are going way up because of the registered individuals. Now, what's the consequence of this in another way for us that is in the organ donation sphere? It's that, yes, we have many more donors, but when you have an IV drug abuse, the IVDU, that becomes a public health service risk in the transmission of infection. HIV, hepatitis B or HCV virus, okay? And so one of the mandates, one of the obligations that we have in this transition of so many more donors as a result of a substance abuse death We've got to make certain that we're not creating a hazard for the transplant recipient to contract HIV or HCV, hepatitis virus, as a result of an organ being removed from such a donor. And we do so by now the technology. Joanna, here's your technology. Our technology is that we can test for the virus antigen itself instead of detecting as we used to do, only the antibody, which takes some weeks, weeks to develop when you've had an exposure to HIV or HCV, we can detect 
Chancellor, we can detect the virus within a few days of the exposure. So if they are dying from an IV drug abuse, we would know three or four days later whether the HCV came along with that injection. So uh, a ramification of the drug addiction for the United States is many people dying, 120 or so dying each day. But also a consequence of that, as I said, it's a bit of a grim irony, is we have so many more organ donors. Just the same, we need to do something about it, and here we are with our governor, uh, Dr. Madras, our governor, Baker, that you would know, and the other governors of New England are now coming together to try and address this. And part of the address has been the physicians may no longer make the kinds of prescriptions of opiates they were once doing. So there's a very careful monitoring of those prescriptions that's being done. Well, finally, I should say, drug addiction, drug trafficking, human trafficking, organ trafficking, all of that is on the plate of Pope Francis. And we met with him uh, in, in the past if because of his concern of organ trafficking in, as a dimension of human slavery. And we'll, we'll, we'll go at it again and soon um, that we, as a community, try and address the organ trafficking problem and combat that successfully. So thank you that I might make these comments briefly, but um, I'm, a, I'm thankful that we might bring that, this aspect of, organ, of, of uh, drug addictions to attention. Thank you, Madam Chair.